Hey, praise the Lord. Greetings to you all in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. This is Brother Clinton and you're back on the Word Prophet channel, a Christian ministry dedicated to the purpose of teaching the Word of God to the people in the churches of God so that we can go back to serving God in spirit and in truth, back to the old paths. It's written in John 4:24, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. In spirit, meaning, of course, by the power of his spirit, which he hath given to them that obey him, and truth, which is, of course, that which is written in the word of God. When I lifted this book saying the word of God, this is my Holy Bible, King James Version. For those of us who speak English, this is the word of God. Praise the Lord. Having said that, I'm hoping that you clicked on this video because of the title because I really have a great love and desire to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ to Mormons. Um, partially because someone in my family is a Mormon, and you probably have someone in your family who is a Mormon. And so this is very important for us to know whether we're Mormons or whether we are Christians. This is important information for us to have and to know. If you're a Mormon, I welcome you here. Um, I, I I hope that you're not here to argue or try to present Mormon theology because I'm not going to entertain that. But I hope that you're here because you love the Lord Jesus Christ and because you desire to learn of his word. And if you're a Christian and you're here because you just want to gather information so you can attack Mormons, you're in the wrong place because that's not what this is about. This is not about attacking anybody. This is not about having arguments or debates. It's about presenting the word of God so that people can learn about the Word of God and come away from the traditions of men that have caused them to err. So, having said that, that's why I'm here. I hope that's why you're here as well. Praise the Lord. So, welcome. Again, my name is Clinton. To those of you who are in Christ Jesus, I'm known as Brother Clinton. And I'm here to present to you the Word of God. And in doing so today, I have something in front of me, which is a page from the churchofjesuschrist.org website. And it is an article which is entitled, How Can Jesus and Lucifer Be Spirit Brothers When Their Characters and Purposes Are So Utterly Opposed? And this isn't something that was written about Mormons by somebody who isn't a Mormon. This was written by somebody who is a Mormon, a Mormon theologian. And it is an article on the churchofjesuschrist.org website. I will leave a link below so that you can read along with me if you like. So I'm not going to read the whole article, but I'm going to read the first paragraph and maybe just a little bit beyond that. We'll see how things go. But I don't want to make this video too long. I want to keep it short and to the point. And I want to present some things to you that, if you're not familiar with the Bible, are probably going to surprise you. And they might even seem wrong to you, the things that I'm about to say to you, because of religious teachings that you've been taught, whether you were raised in a Mormon church or whether you were raised in a Protestant church. Okay. Um, but the things that I'm going to share with you are the truth in Jesus' name. They're not my opinion. I'm not going to say I could be wrong about them because I'm not wrong about them. The things that I'm going to share with you are exactly what's written in the scripture of truth, the word of God. Okay. Um, for those of you who don't know, the, the people that are, that are called Mormons, or the, they call themselves the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, they have four books that they employ in the teachings that they receive. One of those books is the Holy Bible, which unfortunately they're not familiar with because if they were familiar with it, they wouldn't receive the teachings from the other three books. The other three books are called Doctrine of Covenants, Doctrine and Covenants, pardon me, um, the Book of Mormon, and Pearl of Great Price. And these other three books were written largely by Joseph Smith. Okay, Joseph Smith was a man who professed to be a prophet he was actually a Freemason. He didn't know the Lord Jesus Christ. And an unclean spirit came to him. A fallen angel came to him uh, whose name was Moroni and gave him some silver tablets or actually gave him directions to where these silver tablets were hidden. And on these silver tablets or plates, there were things written that were written by devils on these plates. And it was from those plates, those silver plates, that came the Book of Mormon, and also Joseph Smith later on wrote these other books called Pearl of Great Price and Doctrine and Covenants. Okay. In saying what I've just said, I've tried to say it in an objective manner, um, so as not to accuse anybody of anything falsely, so as not to be to seem like I'm angry or accusatory or anything like that, because I'm not. I just said these things as a matter of fact. Okay. I may have said these things in a different way than a Mormon would have said them, but I said them as a matter of fact. 
Joseph Smith was not a Christian. He was never a Christian. He never believed the gospel of Jesus Christ. He never obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the fallen angel that came to him called Moroni was not sent from God. The silver plates that he found inscribed with things were not inscribed by God and had nothing to do with God. The Book of Mormon is a book of lies. And so are the other books called Pearl of Great Price and Doctrine and Covenants. And that's what I'm going to share with you from a couple of very specific points by reading to you the first paragraph of this article. Okay, The Bible, the Word of God, is the truth. The Holy Bible, King James Version. You and I are speaking English, so in the English language, the Word of God is preserved for us in the Holy Bible. And if anybody will take the time to search the scriptures in the Holy Bible, they will see that the things that are written in the Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants, and Pearl of Great Price are lies. Okay? They may sound very godly to someone who doesn't know the Scripture, just like if you were to sit in a Catholic church, not ever having read the Bible, the things that they do might seem godly to you. Or if you were to sit in a Lutheran church, or a Baptist church, or a Pentecostal church, you would think that those things that they're doing and saying in those churches are very godly if you have never read the Bible. But once you read the Bible, you come to understand that the things that they are doing and saying and teaching are not true. And the only way that you can know that is to know the truth for yourself. And something that I'm always saying to people is what Jesus said in John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. If ye continue in my word, said Jesus, if ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Praise the Lord. So with that in mind, let's continue, well, let's begin with the first paragraph in this article. Once again, the article is called, How Can Jesus and Lucifer Be Spirit Brothers When Their Characters and Purposes Are So Utterly Opposed? And for those of you who don't know, the Mormon Church teaches that Jesus, the Son of God, and Lucifer, whom they believe to be Satan, are actually brothers or spirit brothers. And nothing can be further from the truth. That's a complete and total myth. Not only is it a complete and total myth, but the, the, the LDS Church doesn't know who Jesus Christ is, and they also don't know who Lucifer is. And that's what I want to talk to you about. So, as we, can, as, we, as we begin, not continue, but as we begin, the first paragraph says, uh, it begins by acknowledging a person who appears to be a woman, Jess L. Christensen, Institute of Religion Director at Utah State University, Logan, Utah. And it goes on to say, On first hearing, the doctrine that Lucifer and our Lord Jesus Christ, our brothers, may seem surprising to some, especially to those unacquainted with latter-day revelations. Okay, let me just stop and inject something real quick. When this person says latter-day revelations, she's not talking about what the Bible says. She's talking about revelations that came to Joseph Smith and Brigham Young and others, other founders of the Mormon Church, of the LDS Church. Okay, and that's going to be even more evident as we go on. So as we continue reading, it says, But both the scriptures and the prophets affirm... Now, I just want to stop there for a moment. <clears throat> Those of us who are Christians, we're familiar with the term, the scriptures of the prophets. But in the, in the LDS church, they change the words around a little bit in order to mean something different. And they say both the scriptures and the prophets. And when this woman says this, She's not talking about the prophets that we can read of in the, in the scripture, like Jeremiah, Isaiah, uh, Moses, Habakkuk, um, and you know Nehemiah, es, uh, Ezra, uh, the prophets that we read about in the Old Testament, Daniel, Ezekiel, and so on and so forth. When she says the scripture and the prophets, she's talking about the four books that the Mormons read, one of which is the Holy Bible, and the others are the, the other three that I mentioned to you. And when she says the prophets, she's not talking about the Hebrew prophets that, whose scriptures we have written in our Holy Bible. She's talking about the prophets of the Mormon Church, which includes Joseph Smith and Brigham Young and others. And I'm not familiar with the, the names of the others, and I'm not an expert on Mormonism. I've never been a Mormon, but um, and, and I don't claim to be an expert on Mormonism, and I don't need to be an expert on Mormonism in order to present to you the truth of the Word of God in contrast to that which is being presented to you by this article. So, uh, when she says the scriptures and the prophets, she's not talking about the prophets of God. She's talking about the prophets of the Mormon church, which contradict the truth of the word of God. 
So she says, both the scriptures and the prophets affirm that Jesus Christ and Lucifer are indeed offspring of our Heavenly Father and therefore spirit brothers. Okay, that's a complete myth, and I'm not going to address it right now because I want to wait until I get into the next couple of sentences so that I can address this for you. So uh, we read, Jesus Christ was with the Father from the beginning. All right, that's a lie. It's a complete and total lie. There is no one who was with the Father from the beginning. Uh, God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, created all things. He created all things by himself, and there was no one with him from the beginning. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You see, so the Word of God was with God in the beginning. But there is no person that was with God in the beginning. There was no one in the beginning with God. And if you'd like to know more about that, please go ahead and ask in the comment section below or send me an email and I'll be happy to send you a video that I've made, a public video that I've made, which is called, There Was No One in the Beginning with God. And it will show you from the scripture that fact. There was no one in the beginning with God. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was begotten in the womb of a woman, a virgin of Israel, about 2,000 years ago. And before he was begotten in the womb of his mother, he did not exist. Just like you did not exist until you were begotten in the womb of your mother. Okay, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was preordained, foreordained before the foundation of the world, as it's written in 1 Peter 1.20. But he was not in existence, he did not exist until he began to be formed in his mother's womb. That's just common sense, and it's the truth of the scripture. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, did not exist until he was conceived in his mother's womb, just like every other man in existence. The difference between Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and every other man in existence is that his father was not Adam. His father was God. God put his seed into the womb of a woman. She conceived in her womb and brought forth a son. And that son was called Jesus after the name of his father. Praise the Lord. So the sentence, Jesus Christ was with the Father from the beginning, is a complete lie. This shows that the Mormon church doesn't believe the scripture. They don't know who Jesus Christ is. They don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They believe that he is a God, a deity, that supposedly existed from the very beginning, whenever that is, with God the Father. And when I say whenever that is, what I mean is that if Jesus Christ, the Son of God, existed for ever since ever since the beginning as they say ever since god the father existed then when was he begotten and that gives gives rise to that trinitarian phrase eternally begotten which is an oxymoron and it means absolutely nothing there's no such thing as eternally begotten nobody could be eternally begotten because those two words mean totally different things and they cancel out each other begotten means that someone was conceived in the womb of a woman and was caused to begin to exist. Okay, And eternally denotes someone who has no beginning and no end. And the only one who is eternal is God, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is eternal. He is everlasting. And that's his name. He is the one which is and which was and which is to come. And he was manifest in the flesh. And so when you see his son, Jesus Christ, you are seeing God, the Father, who sent him, because God was in Christ. And this is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. This is the scripture. This is the revelation of who Jesus Christ is. So Jesus Christ, the Son of God, did not exist before he was, was conceived in his mother's womb. And he was not with the Father from the beginning. He had glory with his Father before the world was, just like I did, just like all the sons of God do, or did, I should say. But even though I had glory with my Father before the world was, I did not exist until I was formed in my mother's womb. And Jesus, my Lord and my King, he had glory with the Father before the world was as well. This is written in John 17, 5. But yet he didn't exist until he was formed in his mother's womb. This is the revelation of the scripture. This is the teaching of the scripture. So the teaching that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, existed with the Father from the beginning is nonsense, and it is a fable. And then 
This woman goes on to say, Jesus Christ was with the Father from the beginning. Lucifer, too, was an angel, quote, who was in authority in the presence of God, a, quote, son of the morning. Okay, this is not true. The Bible does not say that Lucifer was an angel. The Bible says that Lucifer is a man. And I want to share with you, she, she shared two verses of what she calls scripture. One of them is a verse of the scripture in Isaiah 14, 12. The other one is a passage of the Mormon book called Doctrine and Covenants. So I want to share these with you. In Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12, and I have my Bible open to that passage right now, I want to read to you verses 12 through 20, just kind of real quick, and I want to share some things with you. It says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? All right. Now we're going to continue, but I just want to call your attention to the fact that there's nothing in this verse of Scripture that indicates that Lucifer is an angel. There's nothing anywhere in the Scripture that indicates that. This is the only time in the entire Bible that the word Lucifer is mentioned. And if you will take the time to read the entire 14th chapter of Isaiah, just one chapter, it will only take you about, what, five or seven minutes or something like that, you can see that the first three verses of the chapter sets the stage of what is being spoken of. The first three verses of the chapter make clear that the rest of the chapter, beginning from verse 4, is a parable that will be taken up in the mouths of the people of Israel during the time that Jesus Christ our Lord will have returned and established his throne in Jerusalem and he will be reigning upon the earth with a rod of iron and the enemies of Israel will be forever destroyed and there will be no more wars and Israel will be living in the land that is called Israel in peace and then in those days the people of Israel shall take up a parable in their mouths against this man who was the king of Babylon who is actually called the Antichrist, the son of perdition. This is the man that Paul, the apostle of Christ, wrote about in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, the man of sin, the son of perdition. The things that we're about to read in Isaiah chapter 14 are the, are the exact same things that Paul wrote about in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 when he was speaking about the Antichrist, the son of perdition, the man of sin. Let's continue. Actually, let's start again with verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee, and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble? Is this the man? It doesn't say, is this the angel? It doesn't say, is this the cherub? It doesn't say, is this the devil? It says, is this the man? Okay, the devil is not a man. A man is not a cherub. Satan is not a man. Satan dwells in men, but Satan is not a man. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch. Since when does an angel have a grave? Angels don't have graves. Men have graves. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword, that go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass trodden under feet. This is talking about a man, a human, a human male. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. Okay, now we know that this is not only talking about a man, it's talking about a Jewish man. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. This is talking about the, the man of sin, the son of perdition, a man of the, of the nation of Israel, 
whom I suspect will be from the tribe of Dan, from other areas of the scripture that I won't go into right now. But this is obviously talking about a man. This passage of the scripture is talking about a man. It's not talking about an angel. It's not talking about Satan. It's talking about a man. Let's go over to 2 Thessalonians real quick. For those of you who are not familiar with the scripture, I made a reference to this, but there may be those of you who who aren't familiar with what I'm talking about. So in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, let's start in verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That's exactly what we just read in Isaiah chapter 14. And so then Paul said, Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? Okay, Paul told them these things. How did he know these things? Because they were written in the scripture. Okay, so Paul understood that the character that is called Lucifer, that is being spoken of in Isaiah chapter 14, is Antichrist. It is that man which shall arise in the future from now, and proclaim himself to be God. It is that little horn that Daniel saw in his visions in, in Daniel chapter 7 and chapter 8, which will arise out of the ten horns that will come from the, the revealed Roman kingdom in the latter days. And that man who is called Antichrist, the son of perdition, shall rise and proclaim himself to be God, even as Isaiah wrote of him. Let's go back to Isaiah chapter 14. Praise the Lord. Pardon me, my fingers are kind of dry. So he says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. You see? And then in verse uh, eight, 16, it says, They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? So you see, Lucifer, the only time that Lucifer is mentioned in the Holy Bible at all is in this passage, uh, Isaiah fourteen twelve, And this person called Lucifer in Isaiah fourteen twelve is a man. It's not the devil. It's not Satan. If you'd like to know more about this, and I know that this is very surprising to many of you, and it was surprising to me when I first discovered this by reading the scripture, because I was always taught, I was always taught that Lucifer is Satan, that Lucifer is another name for Satan. Well, it's not. And as I was reading the scripture, I was, I was passing by this, and, and I began to say, Lord, this doesn't make any sense to what I was taught in church. And the Lord showed me, forget about what you were taught in church, and just read my word. See, this is what the Bible means when it says that Jesus is washing his bride with water by the word. It's in Ephesians 5.26. And so, Lucifer is a man. Lucifer is not an angel. Okay? The Mormon church teaches that Lucifer was an angel. Okay? Lucifer isn't was anything. Because Luc when I say isn't was, I know that's not proper English, but I said that that way on purpose. Lucifer isn't was anything because Lucifer hasn't existed yet. Lucifer is a name in the scripture given to a man that shall appear in the world in the future from now, who shall arise and proclaim himself to be God over all gods, and he is that one that the scripture calls the son of perdition, the Antichrist, the man of sin. Lucifer is not an angel. Lucifer is a man. Satan is an angel. The devil, okay, that old serpent, the devil, and Satan, he is an angel. He is, he is the covering cherub. He is the one that was in Eden with, with Adam and Eve. Okay, That's not who Lucifer is. Lucifer is a man, and a man who hasn't even existed yet. A man who will come into the world in the future to do the will of Satan. And he will be indwelt by Satan, but the man is not Satan. And the man is called Lucifer because Lucifer means the shining one. And he, that's who he's going to proclaim himself to be. 
He's going to be loved by everybody, and they, and they will all the world will worship him, and they will all worship the beast. Pardon me, and the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they will say, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And they will make a grand image of the beast, and then the false prophet will come, saith the scripture, and will cause that that the the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Okay, those things are going to happen in the future, and this beast, this man, the son of perdition, is called Lucifer. If you'd like to know more about that, let me know. I'll be happy to refer you so, to some other materials that are available from this ministry, both video and also printed material or typewritten material on the Sword of the Valiant website that will give you more detail from the scripture from Isaiah chapter 14, from Ezekiel chapter 28, from 2 Thessalonians and from other areas of the scripture that will show you clearly that Lucifer is a man. Lucifer is not an angel. Lucifer is not Satan. Okay, so the Mormon church believes that Jesus Christ is a different God than his father and that he was with the father in the beginning. That's a lie. That's a myth. And the, the, the Mormon church believes that Lucifer was an angel. Okay, and Lucifer wasn't, isn't, was anything because Lucifer doesn't exist yet. Lucifer hasn't been on the earth yet. Okay, the person in the Bible that is called Lucifer is, is a man and he hasn't appeared yet. So, that's the, the this woman quoted a verse of the scripture she quoted Isaiah 14:12 to uphold the lies that she just wrote and then she also quoted a a passage from Doctrine and Covenants and I'm going to read it for you it's Doctrine and Covenants 76 verses 25 through 27 I don't have a copy of this book but I'm just looking this uh, looking at this on an internet page okay on a web page I can just click on the link and it comes up for me on the side panel you can do the same thing so this says, Doctrine and Covenants 76, 25 through 27, and it says this, And this we saw also in bare record, that an angel of God, who was in authority in the presence of God, who rebelled against the only begotten Son, whom the Father loved, and who was in the bosom of the Father, was thrust down from the presence of God and the Son, and was called perdition, for the heavens wept over him. He was Lucifer, a son of the morning. And we beheld, and lo, he is fallen, is fallen, even a son of the morning. Okay. Now, I totally understand that to someone who has never read the Bible, doesn't know the scripture, this could sound just like it was given by inspiration of God. It could sound, it, 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 it was worded to sound like the scripture, except it's a lie. Okay. It's a lie. The whole thing is a lie. It has nothing to do with anything that's written in the scripture. Okay. Um, this person called Lucifer is not Satan, and also Satan has not been cast out of heaven. For those of you who think that Satan has been cast out of heaven, you've been greatly deceived, because Satan, according to the book of Job, has the ability to stand in the presence of God and to walk to and fro in the earth. And according to the book of Ephesians, he is the prince of the power of the air and the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And he is operating in heavenly places. So if you believe that Satan has been cast unto the earth, you've been greatly deceived. The Bible says that Satan, that, that, that serpent, the devil, will be cast into the earth. It's written about this in, in Revelation chapter 12. And also Jesus said, I saw Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Okay, He saw this in a vision from God. Satan as lightning falling from heaven. And it's written in Revelation chapter 12 that this is going to happen. But it's going to happen in the future. And when it happens, Satan and his, and his unclean spirits, his angels, will be cast into the earth. And they will be filled with great wrath because they will know that their time is short. And that's something that is part of what is known as the Great Tribulation or the time of Jacob's trouble. And in that day, Satan and his angels will be cast into the earth and they will no more be invisible to the sons of men. They will be manifest and they will be filled with wrath. And it will be worse than any kind of horror movie that you've ever seen. It'll, it'll be worse than anything that Hollywood could have ever invented. Okay, that hasn't happened yet, but it will happen. So this, you know, and, and it takes another, uh, in, in verse 27 of this Doctrine and Covenants, it says, And we beheld, and lo, he is fallen, is fallen, even a son of the morning. <clears throat> so this is taking words from one, uh, words from two different verses of the scripture and putting them together as if they had anything to do with each other when they don't. So it sounds like a verse from the Bible to those that are not familiar with the scripture, but it's not. It's not. It doesn't have anything to do with what the Bible says. It's a complete lie. And it was written by Joseph Smith, who was a false prophet. 
He was a Freemason. He worshipped devils. And one of those devils, an unclean spirit, or I should say rather a fallen angel, came to him and said that his name was Moroni and that God had sent him. And because Joseph Smith wasn't a Christian, he wasn't able to discern that this Moroni wasn't sent from God. And so he received him as being sent from God. And therein began the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which is also called the Mormon Church, which is one of the world's largest satanic cults. And so this woman wrote, uh, let me just back up a little bit. It says, Jesus Christ was with the Father from the beginning. We saw that that's a lie. Lucifer, too, was an angel who was in authority in the presence of God and a son of the morning. And we saw that that's a lie. And then we looked at Isaiah 14, 12, and actually a little more than that, Isaiah 14, 12 through 20. And we saw that the scripture teaches that Lucifer is a man. And then we looked at Doctrine and Covenants 76, 25 through 27, and we saw that it's a complete lie. It has absolutely nothing to do with the Word of God. It contains words from the Scripture, and it's written in language that sounds like the language of the Scripture. So people that don't know the Bible would think that it's true. But this book, Doctrine and Covenants, is not profitable for doctrine. The Bible says all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. Okay? That's the scripture, everything from Genesis to Revelation, the scriptures of the prophets, not the scriptures and the prophets, the scriptures of the prophets. Okay, but the Mormon church, they, they have the Bible, but they have other books and other prophets that are not from God to divert people's attention away from the Bible into these other books. And they call, the, they call one of these books Doctrine and Covenants. So the people in the Mormon church are believing this book called Doctrine and Covenants imagining that it is profitable for doctrine. But the Bible says that it is profitable for doctrine. The Bible says of itself that it, the Bible, is profitable for doctrine. And if people would read the Bible, then they would know that this other book called Doctrine and Covenants is a complete lie. So let's continue on from here. It says, both Jesus and Lucifer, and I'm continuing in this woman's article, both Jesus and Lucifer were strong leaders with great knowledge and influence. That's just, it, it reminds me of Greek mythology. It has absolutely nothing to do with the Bible. It's, it has nothing to do with the truth at all. Um, both Jesus and Lucifer were strong leaders with great knowledge and influence. That's mythology. That's just a, a made-up fable. She goes, on, she goes on to say, but as the firstborn of the father... Jesus was Lucifer's older brother. And now she cites two passages again, one from the Bible and one from Doctrine and Covenants. This is very deceptive, so let me show you what she's doing. She, she quoted Colossians 1.15. Let's go there. Colossians 1.15. <clears throat> and remember, that she said, But as the firstborn of the Father, Jesus was Lucifer's older brother. Okay? So, she says, As the firstborn of the Father... And many people will think, oh yeah, okay, that's what the Bible says. But it's not what the Bible says. Colossians chapter 115 says, Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Okay, it doesn't say the firstborn of the Father. It says the firstborn of every creature. Jesus Christ is the firstborn from the dead. Okay, this is written afterwards in Colossians. Where is it? In verse 18. Colossians 1.18, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. Okay, the firstborn from the dead. When it says in verse 15, the firstborn of every creature, the word creature there is not referring to everything that has ever existed. It's referring to men. Okay, and just so that you don't think I'm making this up, come with me to Romans chapter 8. Hold your place in Colossians if you want to. And come with me to Romans chapter 8. And, pardon me just for a moment while I find it. Okay, let's start in verse 19, Romans 8, 19 and following. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Okay, so three times in three sentences, Paul used the word creature. And in each time he was talking about, or in each instance he was talking about man. Man is the creature. 
Okay, man is the creature he's talking about. He's not talking about bunny rabbits and deers and whales and turtles and trees and, you know, German shepherds and things like that. He's talking about man because man is the one who is redeemed by the gospel of Christ and man is the one who is waiting for the resurrection. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and we who have his spirit in us and are baptized in his name are awaiting the resurrection. So the creature is man. And going back to Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, the scripture says, who is the image of the invisible God, talking about Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Jesus Christ is the firstborn of every creature. He is the firstborn from the dead. He is the first man that ever existed on the earth that was not only risen from the dead, but was risen from the dead incorruptible. There were other men before our Lord Jesus Christ who were risen from the dead by the prophets. Elijah raised men from the dead. Okay? But there, and, and also Jesus Christ raised Lazarus from the dead before Jesus Christ suffered on the cross and rose again. But you see, those men that Elijah raised from the dead, they died again. And Lazarus, he died again. But Jesus Christ can't die anymore. Death hath no more dominion over him, because he hath conquered death and hell, and he has the keys thereof. And so he is the first one to be born from the dead. He is the first begotten of the dead. Therefore, he is the firstborn among many brethren. It says elsewhere in the scripture that he is the firstborn among many brethren. And if you're familiar with the scripture, you will understand that the firstborn is not always the one who was born first. Look at Jacob and Esau. Okay, Look at Pharaoh and Zarah. There are many examples in the scripture of twins or brothers that were born one before the other. And the, and, and the one who was the elder, who was the one who was born first, was not the one who obtained the right of the firstborn. And so the fact that Jesus Christ is the firstborn of every creature doesn't mean that he was the one that was born first. It means that he's the firstborn. He has won the right of the firstborn. He is the firstborn of every creature. He is the firstborn from the dead. Which means that he is now before Adam because he is risen from the dead, incorruptible. Adam brought death upon all men. The second Adam, Jesus Christ, brought life through the resurrection unto all men. And so he is the firstborn of every creature. That's what Paul was talking about. And it's really very clear. It's not a parable and it's not an allegory. It's literal and it's really very simple. And so when this woman says, but as the firstborn of the father, she's saying something that to someone who doesn't know the Bible, that might sound to you like, oh, okay, that sounds like what the Bible would say. But see, if you don't know the Bible, you don't know that the Bible doesn't say that and that this woman is lying to you because Jesus Christ, the son of God, isn't the firstborn of the father. He is the firstborn over all creation. You see? When, when I say he isn't the firstborn of the Father, I'm not talking about the fact that he isn't God's only begotten Son. What I'm talking about is he's not what this woman is saying that he is. He's not another God that was supposedly begotten in eternity past sometime that has existed with the Father from the beginning. That's what she means by the term of the firstborn of the Father. Jesus isn't that. In fact, nobody is that. That's just a myth. So, she says, but as the firstborn of the father, Jesus was Lucifer's older brother. So she's, she's repeating this, this fable that she was taught by Joseph Smith and the other false prophets of the Mormon religion, which isn't written in the scripture anywhere, anywhere but it is written in Doctrine and Covenants, which is a lie. And so the fact that people don't know the Bible and then they turn to Doctrine and Covenants thinking that it's Holy Scripture because someone told them that Joseph Smith and all his other friends were prophets from God, now these people are not believing the scripture, the real scripture, and they're believing false scriptures, proclaiming to them false gods that don't exist. So she says, but as the firstborn of the father, Jesus was Lucifer's older brother. Well, that's a complete fable. It's just a lie. Now let's look at the verse in Doctrine and Covenants that she mentioned. It's in Doctrine and Covenants 9321. And it says, and now, verily I say unto you, I was in the beginning with the Father, and am the firstborn. These are the words of Joseph Smith, a confused Satanist, who was a Freemason, 
who gladly openly received revelation from a fallen angel who said that it was from God, and he started the, one of the world's largest satanic cults. This is a lie. And now verily I say unto you, I was in the beginning with the Father and am the firstborn. That's a lie. Nobody can say that. Nobody. Nobody was in the beginning with the Father. Whatever spirit spoke through Joseph Smith and said that was a lying spirit because it's not the truth. You see? So I want to, I don't want to make this video real long. How long have I been speaking now? Almost 41 minutes. 41 minutes on the nose. And so I don't want to make this video too long. I've already made it a little longer than I intended to. And, I'm, and I thank those of you who are still here with me at this point. I'm not going to go on with this article because it's obvious that it's not true and that this woman is greatly deceived. And also, it doesn't pertain unto a woman to teach. The Bible says that it doesn't pertain unto a woman to teach, but to learn in silence with all subjection. But this woman, I assume it's a woman because it's, it's, she's named Jess. I don't think any man would be named Jess. So I'm assuming that it's a woman. And not only should this woman not be teaching anything just because she's a woman, but also, she shouldn't be teaching what she's teaching because it isn't from God. It's from, the Mormon, it's from the Mormon religion. And this is untangling the lies of Mormonism for you. This, this video is, is to work on untangling all the lies that you have been taught in the Mormon church, for those of you who have been raised up in the Mormon church, to cause you to understand that the books that have been handed to you outside of the Holy Bible are not true. And the reason that you've thought that they are true is, is merely because people have told you that they are. But if you're a Mormon, you've been given four books. And one of those books is the Holy Bible. And you haven't read the Holy Bible. You might have looked at particular passages here and there, passages that were referred to you by your leaders and teachers in the Mormon church. But I can guarantee you that if you're still a Mormon, and if you still believe that Doctrine and Covenants, Pearl of Great Price, and the Book of Mormon are, are given to you from God, then it is evident to me that you haven't read the Bible. Because if you had read the Bible, searched the scriptures, you would see that the other books that I just mentioned are lies. They're all lies. The Book of Mormon says in, in 3 Nephi that Jesus Christ descended from heaven and appeared to a tribe of people called Nephites. I think that's what they were called. Um, which I, I, there's no proof that such a tribe of people ever existed, but that's really irrelevant whether they existed or not is, is beside the point. But the third book of Nephi in the Book of Mormon says that Jesus Christ appeared in the desert of the Americas, in North America, to a tribe of people and told them that when they baptize people, that they are to say, on the authority of the name of Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and then dunk them under the water and not to say anything else. That's a lie. First of all, it's a lie that Jesus Christ appeared from heaven because Jesus Christ himself said that when he would come, it would be like the lightning shines from the east to the west, and every eye shall see him, even them that pierced him. When Jesus Christ comes again in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, every eye shall see him, not just one tribe of people out in the wilderness somewhere. So we know because of that, that this person who appeared to this tribe, if there was anyone who actually appeared to them at all, wasn't Jesus Christ. And that Joseph Smith made this up, and that person that appeared to those people, if there was any such person that appeared to those people from heaven, was an unclean spirit. It was a devil. And we know that not only because of what Jesus Christ said about his coming again, but also because of what this supposed Jesus Christ said to these people. Because the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ were commanded by Jesus Christ himself, who said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And that's what they did. Ten days later when the New Testament began, they began to command people, saying, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. Because Jesus Christ is the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. But this lying spirit supposedly came down from heaven, according to the Book of Mormon and Third Nephi, and told these people that they were to baptize people without any name. 
He told these people, this is how I want you to baptize. I want you to say these words. In the authority of the name of Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That's how people are baptized in the Mormon church. And it is a false counterfeit baptism, which can't save you from anything. And it's not what Jesus Christ commanded. It's not what Jesus Christ commanded. And so it's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then in the Mormon church, after they baptize people with that false baptism that was taught to them by devils, then they have the elders of the Mormon church lay hands on the people. And then after they lay hands on them, they, they pretend that they have received the Holy Ghost, even though they've never spoken with other tongues. But the Bible says that when the Holy Ghost came upon the church on the day that the New Testament began, that they spoke with other tongues and prophesied as the Spirit gave them utterance. Acts 2.4, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That doesn't happen in the Mormon church. It's just the elders come up to them after they're baptized with their false baptism with no name, and the elders lay hands on them, and because the elders have laid hands on them, they think that they automatically have the Holy Spirit now, but they don't. Because when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, you will speak with other tongues and prophesy. That's what the Bible says. But because Mormons don't know the Bible, they just believe whatever the Mormon church tells them because it sounds like things that might be in the Bible. But you know what, my friends? That laziness will result in your eternal destruction. If you're so lazy that you can't search the scriptures for yourself and all you want to do is just go to church once a week and listen to what the elders at church tell you, and it doesn't matter if you go to a Mormon church or a Baptist church or a Lutheran church or a Pentecostal church or a Catholic church. They're all the same. They're all part of the same family. They all tell different versions of the same lie. If you don't have the initiative, if you cannot take the initiative and show the, the strength and the desire before God to seek him in his word and to obey what Jesus Christ said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. If you can't take the initiative to do that, then, if I may say so, you deserve the deception that has come upon you. And when you stand before the Lord Jesus Christ, whether you stand before him as a Mormon or a Catholic or a Jehovah's Witness or a Baptist or a Pentecostal or you know, a Lutheran or, or you know, an African Episcopal or whatever it might be, those things will avail you nothing in his sight. And, and, and you will hear him say to you, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity, and you will not see the kingdom of God. You will see the face of Jesus Christ, but for a moment on your way to the lake of fire. That's where Mormons are headed. That's where all people are headed, except those who obey the word of God. The Bible says in Revelation 22, 14, Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. So my friend, if you're a Mormon, if you've been raised all your life in the Mormon church, I'm not here to attack you. I'm not here to attack your church. I'm here to tell you, according to the Holy Bible, as a minister of Jesus Christ, that you've been deceived. And if you're desirous to know the Lord Jesus Christ, then I'm here to serve you. I'm not here to lord anything over you. I'm not the boss of you. I'm not your dad. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm here to tell you what God said to do if you want to enter into his kingdom because I am a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. By his grace, by the grace of God, I am what I am. Even as Paul said, so say I. By the grace of God, I am what I am. And I come to you this day. God has brought you to me and me to you this day so that you could hear this word and understand that the Mormon church has lied to you and it has falsely called itself the church of Jesus Christ when it is not the church of Jesus Christ. And the prophets who established the church of the so-called church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, they were never Christians. They never believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. They never obeyed his gospel. They never believed his word. And that's why they've given you three other books to distract you from the truth of the word of God, to keep you from discovering the way of truth. But if you will throw away those other books, if you will throw those books in the fire, the Book of Mormon, 
the pearl of great price, and doctrine and covenants, if you will throw those evil, wicked, satanic books in the fire, as all, um, um, as all <laughs> um, things of witchcraft, I'm trying to think of the word, um, implements of witchcraft should be. Okay, anything that has to do with witchcraft, it should be cast into the fire. And if you will cast those things into the fire where they belong, and just read the word of God. Abide in the words of Jesus Christ. He will show you that his word is truth and that those other three books are a lie and that there are no Mormons in the kingdom of God. Yes, there is the church of Jesus Christ. Yes, there are the latter days. And yes, there are saints. But there is no church of Jesus Christ of latter day saints. And the church of Jesus Christ doesn't have any big brick temples that are paid for by the tithes of the people. See, they don't have any lavish temples. The, 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 the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is one of the wealthiest organizations in the world. That itself should tell you, that in itself should tell you that those people are not Christians. Not that there's anything wrong with a Christian being prosperous. But when, a, when an organization that is called a Christian church is one of the wealthiest organizations in the entire world and have connections to organized crime, then that should tell you, and, pardon me, and have connections to organized crime and politics and the Vatican, okay? That should tell you that that organization is not Christian. That in itself. But also, of course, the fact that the things that they teach are not according to God's word. So, I've given you these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, for those of you who are still with me after 50, almost 53 minutes, I sincerely thank you for taking the time to hear this message. And if you have any questions regarding the scripture or anything that I've said in this video, you're welcome to ask me either by submitting a comment in the comment forum below or by writing to me an email if you have a private matter. My email address is right there in the information box. I don't hide behind computer graphics. This is my face. This is me. Here I am. I'm Brother Clinton. And if you write me an email, I will receive your email and I will answer you. As long as, of course, you're writing me in, in a genuine manner desiring to learn of the scripture. Praise the Lord. If you're writing me just to curse me or whatever, then sorry, you're going to have to stand in line. <laughs> you're going to have to take a number. <laughs> but if you're writing me because you desire to learn more about the scripture, uh, praise the Lord. I'm happy to serve you in the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am here to serve you as a Christian minister in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. So for those of you who love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity, may God bless you as you abide in his word. In Jesus' name, amen.